If you're one of those people that for years has been talking about you can't wait for Triple H to be in power of creative of WWE, I hope you're happy with what you got. Because night one of WrestleMania was underwhelming. It wasn't sparkly and spectacular like this shirt is. It was underwhelming and felt nowhere near like what you would expect to see from WrestleMania. It just didn't. Now, I know going into this show, I wasn't very excited about it because there were only a couple things I thought that really mattered. And ultimately, the only shit that really truly mattered the most is whatever the hell The Rock was going to do. And in some ways, it felt like the crowd kind of agreed. Uh, but so many things were off, like the presentation. Not much breaks in terms of like backstage segments outside of like the one Sami Zayn thing with his wife and his kid, yada, yada, yada. Not much with legends or Hall of Famers or anything like that. Too much focused on the in-ring shit. Not enough to break it up. Not what you would expect typically from a WrestleMania. The flow of the show was kind of off. Just the acoustics were bad here. Bad. That Philly crowd didn't, at least watching at home, and I had the sound way up on the 75-inch Schlegatron 5000 TV, right? It did not sound like they were hot all night. It did not. The sound was lagging and delayed. And it's one thing some ham and egg or YouTuber has that happen. But you're talking about a billion, billion dollar company with millions of dollars in production values. You got to get that shit right. And whether it was WWE or it was a streaming service, Peacock, it was fucked up all night. You would see a move. And then you would hear the sound. It would be like this and then this and then. And at some point in time, that shit becomes fucking distracting. We're not watching some eye pay-per-view of 15 years ago. Holy hell. And to those that were in Philly that were complaining about it being cold there, 50 degrees isn't that cold. Number one. Number two. We gotta start calling them pussy delphias. They're gonna start thinking like that. Are y'all that soft? Really? Besides, you were amongst 70,000 or so wrestling fans. And I love how Roman and The Rock were at, at the end of the night, were trying to get everybody to raise up their ones. Man, that fucking thermal insulation you got for the wrestling fan body odor there at the old league. Sure, it kept it nice and toasty warm in there for everyone. I'm just saying. But yeah, this show, night one at least, this wasn't it. Oh, there were moments. There were certainly moments, right? But the overall, like, mania worthiness of this was pretty low. Like, you get to the opening match. Rhea Ripley, Becky Lynch for the Women's World Championship. Apparently, Becky Lynch had like 102 fever and strep throat, and we're letting her go out there as a freaking germ factory? Like, feels kind of odd, even in a post-COVID world, that you would just allow her to do that? And maybe that impacted her performance, but she kind of sucked here. It felt like Rhea actually showed up in a big match, and she had to carry this fucking match, and thank God she won. Because, yeah, Becky could have a... A script from her book written on her gear, but it didn't help her actually work this match worth a shit. It was not good. It was mid as fuck. And even if you say, well, this match was okay, it was fine. You know, this is WrestleMania, and it's supposed to be two of your bigger and brighter female stars. Okay or fine is not acceptable when it's for a title. It's just not. What's funny, when I was watching the six-pack tag team ladder match, was you got these guys doing all types of like crazy high risk type of shit. You've got freaking Gargano and Johnny Lameface and fucking Ciampa sitting there and doing some whack ass DX cosplay bullshit. Where the fuck did that come from? What the hell did I miss? Whatever. Um, but these guys are sitting there doing all this bumping around, doing all this other crazy bullshit. 
you know, props to them for putting their body on the line. And at least you're going to say, if you're going to do it at some point, you do it at fucking WrestleMania. But then our truth sits there and gets the crowd to erupt the biggest they had the whole night up to that point by wanting to get a hot tag in a ladder match and being a fucking character and a personality. And when they initially had Waller and Theory win the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, I said, wait, I thought this was undisputed. Okay, you know what? They're splitting the titles. There's still a chance. And the only thing at the end of the day that mattered in this fucking match was that the awesome truth had to win and our truth had to get his WrestleMania moment. He never won at WrestleMania. He's been way too loyal to the foot soldier for way too many years. He's done way too many entertaining things. Fuck the future. The future is now. Let this young lion in his early 50s roar one time on top of the ladder, even though I thought he was afraid of heights. It doesn't freaking matter. Our truth deserved this WrestleMania moment. I'm glad he got it. And I'm glad that crowded Philly was embracing it and they were behind it. They understood what this moment was supposed to be about. So that match, that moment of our truth climbing the ladder and getting the Raw Tag Team titles, that will be one of my highlights, no question about it, from this year's WrestleMania. Then you had the tag team match, Rey Mysterio and Andrade versus Santos Escobar and Dirty Dominic Mysterio. You know, this is where I really started to sense that the acoustics were off. And you're going to say, well, it's an open air stadium, so the sound tra- travels up. Maybe that's some of it, right? But it was just, it was off all night. Like, everything about the presentation here felt really wacky. Because even Dominic didn't get booed like you might have expected in this spot. He didn't get the Dom type of heat that you would have expected. And, you know, it's crazy now that I think about it. Isn't this a third straight WrestleMania that Ray and his son have worked at WrestleMania either with each other or against each other? That's just crazy. You know, someday uh, Eddie's son will beat Ray one-on-one at Mania, but it ain't going to be this year, brother. Ray Mysterio said, no, no, no. <laughs> that doesn't work for me, brother. Mi hermano, no, 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 no. <laughs> he said, no, 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 hermano. Not this time. Not this year. Fuck that. And then you had, you. it was obvious it was Jason Kelsey and somebody else. I was thinking it was Lane Johnson because how big and fucking tall the guy was and how strong he was. But you had Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson come out in the luchador mask. Cool little homage to the Philly fans there. Whatever the case. And you see Jason Kelsey and you're like, oh, he's got more charisma than 95% of the roster. There's the problem. You got multiple NFL players that you, you think would be more believable and more likely to draw money and sell tickets than most of the people in the freaking ring. I still think it's crazy that Rey Mysterio is pushing 50 and the dude could still move like that. Just insane. But Eddie's son still ultimately did him proud, even though he came up on the short end here. I think easily the most disappointing match of the night and the worst match of the night was the Battle of the Usos. Team Yeet versus Team No Yeet. How about Team Sheet? This match was shit. All of the history between these two guys, and it was just a standard one-on-one match. The build-up to this match in recent weeks has sucked. But you would expect these two guys are fucking twins. They've worked together for years to have some type of in-ring chemistry and not just be having a Samoan super kick fucking young bucks of suck fucking match. And yet they couldn't manage to pull that off. Jimmy Uso looked like he hit the gym about zero times. Been drinking a lot of carbs. If you get it by drift, hopefully you ain't been fucking driving. God damn. That match sucked. And when you look at the the official time, it only went 11 minutes. It felt like it went 25. That's how boring it was. It was bad. And if you say, well, it was just starting to get good and then it stopped. I I would like to know where it ever got good because it didn't. It sucked. What a fart. What a disappointment. Uh, What wasn't a disappointment, though, was a six women's tag. I saw some people tweeting about, oh, look at Dakota Kai. And I'm like, you know what? If boards are your thing, that's fine. I like my valleys, baby. (laughs) All of that beautiful black boss bay magic, that black girl magic, Bianca Belair, Naomi, Jade Cargill, Fucking shit. I don't know what's going to happen with Cody Sunday night, but I know this much. 
after this match and all the celebratory hugging they were doing, Jay doing the fucking thing where she licked her hand, I finished my story in pretty short order, and it was gratifying for sure. I'm just saying, if you know what I mean. Like, that was a highlight. I don't give a fuck about the match. Yeah, sure. Jay got the win. She looked great. Naomi looked great. Bianca looked great. I don't even remember anything about the other three. Who gives a shit? I, I, I try to disrespect Asuka, but look at these three sisters and you're going to tell me that I'm supposed to give a fuck about the other team. I'm just saying. I finished my story, damn it. That's all that matters. And then you get to the next match, which a lot of other fans were going to finish their story afterwards, and that was Sami Zayn taking on Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. And, you know, I felt like this could be the moment they have Gunther drop the staff trap. They could make this Sami Zayn's moment. But it really felt like they were going out of their way to telegraph this with his wife and kid backstage and then Kevin Owens. And it's like, holy hell. Predictable sometimes is okay, but sometimes it's not. Don't telegraph the fucking thing. The good thing about this match, it was good. It was not great to me. It was good is it was believable in the sense, to me at least, from my perspective, Gunther dominated a good portion of the match, much greater than 50%, meaning this wasn't the type of 50-50 shit you see a lot in wrestling now. That's how this should have went. A little more like the Rocky story, where the better guy, you know, the bigger guy sits there and dominates the majority of the thing, and then you get some hope spots, and you get some moments for the challenger, and that's what they got here. And that finish was executed incredibly well. So, you know, people are going to talk about Gunther being the greatest intercontinental champion ever. You know, sure, whatever you want to throw it to him like that, fine. What, is he going to head to the world title picture soon? They probably, right? Uh, but Sami Zayn deserved this moment. He still got fucking sabotaged last year because they just had to give Cody that moment at fucking WrestleMania, didn't they? Uh, but this is the second straight year he's had a big WrestleMania moment. Last year, winning the tag straps in the main event of night one. This year, beating Gunther and ending the longest Intercontinental Championship reign in company history. So there you go. So there were a couple highlights. But uh, again, like just as it's been the past two months or so, the WWE's been all about the rock and fuck everything else. Intentionally, unintentionally. And you even got that sense tonight from the Philly crowd. Now, first, I want to call this out. To me, it's freaking psycho behavior. Psycho behavior. Mania or not. To have this type of match on night one and run the risk of fucking up either or both of your world title matches in night two. That's the first thing. What happens if Rollins legitimately gets hurt? or Cody does, or Roman does, or even The Rock does, right? Not a good thing. This is incredibly risky. And then to top it off, between the entrances, the freaking match that went 44 damn minutes. Who the hell asked for this? Wrap it up in 25 or 30, Junior, please. That fucking went almost 45 minutes. 16 or so minutes for all the damn entrances. Plus the post-match. They went over an hour with this shit. Golly. The fuck. But even with this match, it felt like kind of bizarro world in some respects because you were hearing boos for Cody Rhodes. You were hearing boos for Seth Rollins. You certainly heard some boos for Roman Reigns, but I actually thought they were a little less than what I would have expected. And Rock was clearly the guy. No big fucking surprise. And, you know, even when I looked at the four guys when they're standing in the ring, it's like, Rock looks like a freaking Greek god. Roman looks legit and badass as shit. Cody at least looks like he freaking belongs there. And then you got Seth Rollins' goofy ass with the blue rose or whatever the hell that was on his coat. It's like, what the fuck? Like, this is drip, baby. This is style. That made you look like a fucking farce. A farce. And then you've got Cody getting booed. And to those that are saying, well, it's the Philly crowd, what would you expect? You also got to remember this is WrestleMania. This isn't a standard pay-per-view. That means these are fans flying in from all over the country and all over the world. So actually, that makes it worse because it's not just bizarre world of Philly ECW heel fans. 
This is a potpourri a mix of fans from all over the fucking place, and Cody wasn't being unanimously cheered. Uh-oh, we're officially transitioning into the John Cena tier of forced baby faces that become the fucking obstacles. Big shock. Oh, man, this match. I was wondering how this was going to play out. I didn't expect it to go this fucking long. Um, but as this thing got going, it was really slow at first. It was really dragging, and it really started to kick ass, and it really started to fuck. It really did. It got to where it needed to go. You know, that moment when Ro- Roman spears Dwayne, freaking, you thought, oh my God, this is where it's going to go south, right? You could have made it work there. Um, you know, that was that was great. And then as you went through like the last 10 to 15 minutes, it got better and it got better and it got better. And my favorite part of all, of course, is the fucking finish. <laughs> he said, fuck your story. Hey, Hunter's like, We'll see, Dwayne. Uh, what we want to do uh, is have Cody go over and have it be one on one mother we mother on Sunday night. Uh, and, and the Rock said, he said, and Dwayne said, that doesn't work for me, brother. I've got an idea. How about Cody? You eat this fucking <laughs> rock bottom of this people's elbow and the one, two, three, bitches. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> rock is rock is what he's about gonna be 52 next month you show these punks what it's real business is you show them how big man business is done and that was the thing that was striking as you're watching this match right like the crowd wasn't absolutely universally behind cody throughout they certainly were not and you can't pretend like they were they certainly weren't for seth rollins it was kind of a mix for roman some moments they were booing him, but other moments, like when he did the ooh, uh, everybody fucking did that. So it wasn't like he was universally hated or getting pooned on. And then you had the freaking rock. You know, this is one of the challenges of having Dwayne involved. It's because he's so much better than everybody else. He's so much a bigger deal than everybody else. He has so much more charisma and magnetism and star power. It, it's impossible to quantify just how much more he does. Like even in his entrance... He came out, made Romans, which is traditionally a fantastic entrance, look like bitch shit in comparison. It did. But that scene at the end, Rock with his own people's champion belts, fantastic, man. And Cody sitting there in the ring like, ooh, Bodie face. You know, what's this going to lead to on night two of WrestleMania in that main event? Bloodline rules match. Man, you know this is going to be one of the most overbooked fuck fests of all time. You know Jimmy's going to get involved. You know Solo's going to get involved. You know Jey Uso's going to get involved. You know The Rock's going to get involved. You can only imagine who else might show up. John Cena might fucking show up. Frickin' the glass shatters and it's stone cold and him and Rock have one more face-off at WrestleMania. All of this shit is possible. You could get Hunter involved. Like, praise God, ugh. Like, night two... It, that main event, if it's not the most overbooked main event in WrestleMania history, I'd be stunned. It would be like peak attitude era bullshit. Like this was kind of tonight, right? In terms of the main event. It was kind of a plotting brawl for the first half of it before they went spectacular and had the big finish. Um, other things that stood out about this show, you know, like when you have the three beautiful black goddesses wrestling, why is the sponsor for that match Wingstop? Come on, dude. What the fuck? (laughs) Who does this shit? Who has three of the guys that have to wrestle tomorrow fucking main event? And here's what's ridiculous about all of this. After all that bullshit tonight, Rock pins Cody. Now how stupid does that make Roman look tomorrow after three and a half years of being the champion if he loses to Cody, who also, just like Roman, had to wrestle night one? Right? I mean, at least Rock winning here kind of plays up to the final boss shit. But, you know, it kind of shoots in the in the foot those that were saying, oh, Rock and Roman would have got booed out of the fucking building. Well, anybody was getting booed compared to The Rock. Like, it's the fucking Rock at WrestleMania. It's his first time working a full-length match in 11 fucking years. I'm not counting the shit eight years ago with Rowan that wins six seconds. 
Um, fuck, man. But you know what? Tomorrow night, if they go with it, it would be the perfect way to have Roman's reign end. Go out like a whimper. Have Cody's reign start. Come in with the overbook whimper where the focus and shine is on everything but everybody but him. And he's not universally over as a baby face with your largest crowd of the year. Like, that would suit WWE perfectly. It would be absolutely appropriate and fitting. I would assume tomorrow you got to have Drew McIntyre beat Seth Rollins. And it actually probably needs to be a squash job. Because if you sit there and have a night after this type of match that went almost 45 minutes, you have Cody and Roman go another half hour. It makes them all look stupid. And if you have Rollins and McIntyre go like 20 or 30 minutes, it makes Drew look stupid as shit. Whatever, man. But, like I said, at the end of the day, even though I get the cacaws and the chuckles out of <laughs> Dwayne came in and he did Dwayne Johnson business. He said, that doesn't work for me, brother. What I'm going to do, we should just do uh, the rock bottom. Uh, people, elbow, one, two, three. <laughs> I'm like, I, I live for that. I love that shit, right? But, goddamn, this was an underwhelming night one of WrestleMania. It really fucking was. It was just something off the whole night. The energy was off. The sound was fucking off. The ambiance, the atmosphere was off. This felt like a glorified, like, anniversary show type of Raw, which is cool in that context, but not for your biggest show of the fucking year. And maybe part of this is the shit of you're trying to do too much of a good thing. And it comes back to that place of where WWE was getting to a place where WrestleMania was running one night, but it was running five plus hours and it was getting to be too fucking much. And instead of understanding less is more and cutting some unnecessary shit out and focusing on the things you could really do well, they decided, well, we're going to make it two nights. And, you know, sometimes maybe that works, but maybe this is an example of a year where you didn't have two nights of real WrestleMania worthy matches. You really did it. Sorry, not sorry. Like, maybe even if you look originally look at some of these matches, you say, yeah, they belong in WrestleMania, but there are probably several of them you look at and you say, no, they don't. You could probably have cut out half of the matches on night one, half of the matches on night two, had a three and a half to four hour one night WrestleMania and had a better show. You're dragging this shit out too much. The genie's out of the bottle, so you're never going to put that fucker back in. But if the show you put together isn't great, it's going to really be evidenced in certain years. And I think it is this year. The lack of really interesting stuff going on. Again, it's the rock sandbox and everybody's fucking kitty litter. Flat out. I hope night two is better than night one. This certainly wasn't anything to write home about.